Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can accurately mix your live stream using headphones. Until I found this solution, I have strongly advised people not to use headphones as the primary way of mixing your live stream. The reason is your mixes won't translate well to the rest of the world. What I mean by that is, you could have something sounding great in your headphones, but when you go and listen to that mix in other places, on a TV, from your phone, on some real speakers, the infamous listen to it in your car test, or even just on a different pair of headphones. It will almost always just sound different. Mixing on headphones hasn't been able to compare to mixing with a decent set of studio monitors in a treated room. That is, until now. I came across this website that has EQ calibration curves for headphones for the purpose of making what you mix with your headphones translate well. And I was really skeptical at first, but then I tried it, and I have to say I'm a believer now. I've tried a couple different headphones that I use often, and I know they sound different from each other. They each have very different characteristics. I used the Sony MDR7506 and a pair of Shure SE215s. And I have links to these down in the description of this video if you want to try them out for your mixing. What I noticed first and was impressed by was how similar my mixes sounded when I switched between the two pairs of headphones, using each of their calibration curves. Then when I listened to the mix on various speakers, I was satisfied with how the mix was turning out. Was it perfect? No. But was it close enough that it would work for someone who's wanting to start mixing their live stream from a DAW on a budget? I think so. Let me give a quick caveat though before I show you how to set this up. I still do not recommend mixing in the same room as the event on headphones. No matter how isolating your headphones are, if you are in the room, you're always going to be influenced by the low end and other vibrations that you feel in the room. And that is going to throw your mix off. But using headphones in an isolated location could be a cheaper way for people to break into mixing their live stream in a DAW compared to having to use studio speakers and treat your room with acoustic treatment to really get the benefit of using those speakers. With that out of the way, let's dive in. On this website, autoeq.app, all you have to do is find your headphones in the list. I'll use my Sony MDR7506s for this example. Here on the left for target, you can select different EQ target curves that it's going to try and get your headphones to align with. Harman over ear 2018 seems to be the most popular that people are using. And to be honest, I haven't played with any of the others because I've been so pleased with this one. Here on the right for equalizer, select custom parametric EQ. And now up here in the graph, if we turn everything off except equalizer, this is the curve that we need to apply to our headphones. Down at the bottom are the parametric EQ parameters that will enter into an EQ to make this correction curve. You can put these parameters into any EQ plugin in whatever DAW that you are mixing from. If you're post-producing recorded tracks, you can just put that EQ at the end of your master bus chain while you're mixing, and then just be sure to bypass it when you render out your final mix. But if you're going to be mixing live with your DAW, you need to make sure that it has some sort of control room functionality where you can apply the EQ to whatever you're hearing in your headphones, but that EQ is not applied to what's going out to your live stream video. I'm going to take a deep dive now into how to set that up in Reaper. I've just finished a whole series of videos on my channel called Make My Live Stream Sound Better. And in that, I walked through in great detail how to set up and mix your live stream using Reaper. I'll be using that same setup now with Dante that I showed you in that series. I have a Dante AVIO analog output device sending my mixed audio to my monitoring path to this mixer where I could connect my headphones. And a second Dante output device that is sending audio to my actual live stream video. If you aren't using Dante like this, and you wanted to use two output devices on your computer, you could use the technique I showed in my two outputs from Reaper video, and it would work the same. I'll put a link to that video down in the description for you. To understand what I'm about to do, 
Let's look at how the Reaper master bus output works. I have some recorded tracks here to represent my audio coming in, and they are being routed to the master bus. That audio will go through any plugins we have inserted on the master bus above this line, and below this line is a sends area, just like we have on any of our normal track channels. The default configuration for Reaper is a send to output 1 and 2 of your configured audio device, which in your setup will most likely be Dante Virtual Soundcard. That's how we get our mix back out onto Dante. And in Dante Controller, both our monitoring and live stream audio outputs are routed to get their audio from this output. Right now, our master bus has two channels coming in, and those two channels are routed to two channels of our output device. The first thing we need to do is add an additional stereo output so we can send one to our stream and another to our headphones. To do that, click a send slot and change the track channels from two to four. What we've done there is created a master bus that looks like this. It now has four inputs and four outputs. Now in the Add New Hardware Output dropdown, select the set of Dante outputs to connect to these new output channels. The next unused set makes sense, so three and four. Then we will also need to change the source for these outputs to come from channel three and four. Essentially, now we have this setup. We have four channels coming into our master bus and four channels going out, with the first set of channels going to Dante output one and two, and the second set of channels going to Dante output three and four. To make this routing work for our setup in Dante controller, we would route Dante outputs one and two to our video device and Dante output three and four to our monitoring device. But if I play my tracks, the audio is still only gonna show up on channels one and two of the output. Because if I look at the routing coming in from my channels, they default to being sent to input one and two of the master bus, which is actually okay. We wanna leave it that way. So far, so good. Next, you need to install a very simple plugin that I wrote to give us this control room functionality. I've got a link to where you can download this for free from my website down in the description of this video. Once you have it downloaded, unzip the contents of the zip file and copy it into this path on your computer where Reaper keeps its JSFX. Once that's done, back in Reaper, click in an open slot of your master bus's effects area and add that plugin, Master Bus Monitoring Ballast Media. And then move it to the top of your effects chain. That is very important. This plugin needs to be the first plugin in your master bus chain, otherwise the routing we do won't work and our EQ curve that we add to our headphones won't work correctly. So make sure this is always first. With that plugin inserted, now if I play back my tracks, audio is going to all four of my outputs. All that master bus monitoring plugin does is take what's coming in on channels one and two of the master bus and copy it over to channels three and four as well. You'll notice though that the outputs are at a different level. That's because our plugins are still only acting on output one and two. So open each plugin, go to this two in plus out routing button at the top, and we want to add in that we want this plugin to affect outputs three and four as well. Repeat that for all the plugins on your master bus. Now let's finally add in our headphone EQ correction curve. You could use just about any parametric EQ for this. My favorite free EQ plugin right now is this ZL equalizer. I've got a link to where you can get this down in the description as well. One important note about this EQ plugin though, if you do use this EQ for live mixing, be sure and go into the general menu and turn zero latency on. Otherwise, if you are using this on individual tracks, you'll be getting things out of time alignment. Now we can enter in the parameters from over on autoeq.app. And that really is as simple as adding an EQ band by double clicking, set it to low shelf, frequency 105, Q 0.7, and gain 
and then just create a band for each of these entries. And after you enter all of those, be sure and pay attention to this preamp gain down here. Since you've added in some boost, you've potentially taken away headroom, especially since this is on your master bus. So in the ZLEQ, go to the output menu, and for output gain, set that to the recommended value. For me, that's negative 2.7. Unfortunately, you can't enter an exact value here, so just get it close. It's better to err towards removing more volume from your signal so you don't get distortion, since this will only be affecting what we hear in our headphones. And now to configure it to only affect our headphones, go up to the routing button, and we want our input from one and two, but we only want our output to go to three and four, which is feeding our monitoring. Now if we play our track, you can see if we raise and lower the volume in our EQ plugin, it's only changing the signal going to output three and four. So this calibration EQ only affects what's going to our headphones and doesn't do anything to the output that's going to our live stream. A couple last operational notes that will help you to actually use this. I like to right click on the EQ and select rename effects instance and call it headphone calibration. That way you'll remember what this EQ is doing on your master bus. I also like to go into the EQ and save this as a preset so that I can recall it later quickly without having to re-enter all of those parameters. And also if you're outputting to a little mixer for your monitoring that's driving speakers and your headphones and you wanna switch back and forth between them, all you have to do is hold down shift and click this EQ and it will be bypassed. So now you could listen on your speakers without the calibration EQ. And there you have it. You can now mix with headphones. I say give it a try and see how your mixes translate with these EQ curves. I'd love to hear if it works for you down in the comments. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, bye.